Hey everyone, it's Ashley with Big World Young Feet and I'm here to talk about what I read in October. The first book I read in October was The Little White Horse by Elizabeth Gooch. I've already posted a review of this on my channel and I will link to it down below. This was probably my favorite book in October. It was just so sweet and charming. Wonderful characters, a great story, a very quick read. I recommend this to everybody. It was such a good book. The next book I read was Meet Me in St. Louis by Sally Benson. I read this because I was going to St. Louis and I figured why not right? <laughs> this was also a really adorable book. You've seen the Judy Garland movie of the same name. This is the book that movie is based on and all the characters in this novel will feel familiar to you. Meet Me in St. Louis follows the Smith family, especially the two older sisters Esther and Rose, throughout their life in one calendar year, 1903, uh, in St. Louis. Like the movie, each chapter in the book is one month in the family's life, and each chapter talks about different members of the family and what's going on. So you learn about Esther and Rose and their romantic exploits, you learn about Tootie and Agnes, the little sisters and their hijinks, you learn about Grandpa and the mother and father character. This is a really great picture of turn-of-the-century life in a booming American city. As I visited St. Louis, it was so wonderful and charming to see a lot of the neighborhoods that would have inspired this novel. A lot of plot in Meet Me in St. Louis. Um, the movie has a great plot that you that you follow and you get invested in. The book is very episodic and almost like little short stories that are loosely joined together, but there's not a lot of conflict resolution or plot resolution. So if you're looking for a story to really dig your teeth into, this is not going to be that. But it, it is a great picture of family life. Uh, and if you're looking for a classic read with the great holiday scenes as we're getting ready for Thanksgiving and Christmas, this would be a fun one to pick up. The next books I read, I listened to on audiobook, uh, Little House in the Big Woods, and then the second one, Little House on the Prairie. I was listening to these as I cross-stitched in the evening, and they are such a fun throwback to my childhood. Who didn't read these books growing up? They are so good, and they have not lost any of their charm. The Ingalls family is so cozy, and you feel like you know them. Um, what I noticed in re-listening to these two books is that my perspective has changed as I've gotten older. As a kid, of course, I loved Laura and her character and learning about all the fun things she got to do, and I always wanted to live in a cabin in the woods because I thought she had the best life ever. As I've gotten older, I really found myself wanting to know more about Caroline, the mother's perspective. She doesn't really have a great presence in these books. You hear a lot about Pa and you hear a lot about Laura and her sister, but you don't hear much about Caroline and what she's thinking or feeling. She was the most interesting character to me as I have been re-listening to these books. I have seen that there is a new book out, not by Laura Ingalls Wilder, but it is approved by the family um, called Caroline that is a retelling of this series from her perspective. So I have it on hold at the library. I put in a request for it. I can't wait till it comes in. I'm really interested to see how an author will tell, retell this wonderful, charming childhood story from the mother's perspective. The next book I read, and you can tell I was getting her name for Halloween with this one, was Witches of America by Alex Marr. This this is the only nonfiction book I read this month and also the only book I read that I did not enjoy. So this is an autobiographical book. Alex Marr, our author, uh, wants to explore witchcraft and it starts off as kind of an ethnography or just a research project into the various pagan uh, religions in the United States. In the early chapters of the book, she talks a lot about the history of paganism in the U.S., how it came here from England, how it really started in the 50s, um, though it claims much older roots. Uh, but as she's exploring paganism in these different branches of it, she really begins to feel attracted to paganism and witchcraft. And the latter half of the novel is about her journey into becoming a witch. Now, I did not like this book because I was really hoping it was all going to be like the first opening chapter. I wanted to learn about paganism in the United States. There are lots and lots and lots of types of witchcraft. It's not just Wicca. There's like a million different types. Um, and I wanted to learn about those. I wanted to learn about what the, what the different practices are and what they, they value. Um, this book really only talks about eye magic or ceremonial magic, and that's really only one type, and it's a pretty limited type at that. So I didn't, this book is not what you want to pick up if you're looking to learn about paganism. This, is, this really became more about her journey into it. And that, and even that was problematic to me. 
Alex seems really uncomfortable with witchcraft throughout the course of the novel, which is strange because she spends four or five years with witches. So you would think that after a year or two she would loosen up and get a little more comfortable with them, but the whole time her, her tone um, in, in, the, in the book is very uncomfortable. I don't want to say judgmental, but it feels very awkward even after four or five years of her living with covens across the U.S. And that never gets fully resolved even by the end of the book. It ends very quickly and abruptly and you still don't quite know what she decided by the end of her journey. So I didn't love this one. It was still an interesting read, but I, I was probably looking for something else when I picked this up and read it. And I actually finished reading this one in early November, but I was reading it for a lot of October, so I'm going to include it in this one. This is Lois the Witch by Elizabeth Gaskell. This, this was recommended by Katie at Books and Things, and I'm really glad I picked it up. This was in, a very enjoyable book. Lois the Witch is a novella that focuses on the character of Lois Barkley, who moves to Salem, Massachusetts from England right before the Salem Witch Trials. Of course, she is accused of witchcraft, and the novel's plot deals with her journey from you know being a new immigrant to the United States, being accused of witchcraft, and the result of her trial. However, this feels less like a novella or a plot focused book to me and more like a treatment of the psychology behind the Salem Witch Trials. So I really liked this novel delved into the psychology behind the Salem Witch Trials a lot. You get a lot of insight into what each character is thinking and what their motivations are and what their reasonings are and how they proceed and how they operate within the Puritan community in Salem. And I think one of the weaknesses of this book is that the narrator doesn't seem to be aware that her own time has these same kinds of prejudices and could easily do the same thing that, that the Puritans did to so-called witches in Salem. I would have liked this book more had the narrator taken more of a cautionary tone instead of a reflective tone. Really, the voice had been more of a, we need to look at our own society and see where, where our own blind spots are and where our own prejudices are, prejudices are and how we might fall prey to the same type of hysteria that Salem did in the 1600s. But overall, this was an excellent book, fairly quick read. It was my first book by Elizabeth Gaskell, so I think it was a good entryway to her, and I'm excited to pick up some other books. So that was my October. How was yours? I can't wait to hear what you're reading in November.